You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro. Joining us today, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday, 11th day of April, 2022. Thanks so much for joining us, whoever you are, wherever you are. We're just glad to have you right here, right now. Uh, we go live each day at 12 noon Eastern. Our live training room is in the morning from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern. That's available only to our members and those who are taking their free trial. But the afternoon broadcast it's for everybody. So, there's two ways you can join the show at 12 noon Eastern. The best way to join the show is to do this one time. Go to our homepage at CFRN.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered in about 30 seconds, and that will give you one-click access to the show each and every day. The way it works is once you go through that one-time registration process, going forward, right before the show starts, you'll get an email. And in the email is a link. And all you have to do is simply click the link to join the show. No login process. And that gives you access to the question box so that you can ask questions and participate in the discussion. Now, on the days you're out of the office, away from your desktop, grab any internet connected browser on any device and simply point it to youtube.com slash CFRN. Not only do we broadcast live each and every day on our YouTube channel, we also archive each and every daily show Currently, there are over 2,000 daily live broadcasts archived for your educational and viewing pleasure. So whichever way you choose to join, we're always glad to have you here. Let's open with a word of prayer. Our scripture, Jeremiah 20, verse 9. But if I say... I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name. His word in, is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. In other words, Jeremiah is proclaiming that God's word in his heart and in the depths of his soul just can't be contained. It's as if he could just explode if he holds in God's word any longer. I believe that this fiery passion is what the Lord is calling us to have even now. What if we make a choice to proclaim the good news? What if we make a choice to share our testimony as often as possible? How would our lives change if we develop this same deep desire to share this message of hope and love with anyone willing to listen. I believe we would see the world radically changed. We would see our families restored. We would see hearts healed and minds made whole. Today my prayer is that we can embrace the discomfort of sharing the gospel to a stranger or even praying for a person in need. My hope is that we won't ever be ashamed of what God has done or is doing in our lives. Instead, we can rise and stand on God's truth in a world that is desperately seeking affirmation. 
May we come together like a great army to influence the culture with prayer and action. So many are waiting for us to simply open our mouths and proclaim the goodness of God. On the other side of sharing our faith, generations can be impacted. My prayer is that silence is never our testimony and that God would help us to boldly share his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your work on the cross. Within myself, I could never be good enough. Daily, I struggle with how to live a life that is pleasing to you. Yet amid my troubles and imperfections, you sought to save me and draw me unto you. For this, I give you thanks. Thank you for the daily, weekly, and yearly blessings that remind me that you are looking out for my best interest. Help me never take this for granted. Today, Lord, I ask that you give me boldness to share what you have done in my life. I pray against all timidity and fear associated with sharing the gospel. Show me how to formulate my words in a way that the hearer can understand and relate to. Give me a heart for your people and show me how to speak in a way that draws many to you. I ask for opportunities to pray for people and proclaim the good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, happy Monday. Hope it's a happy Monday for you, wherever you are and wherever you are. Short week, Good Friday on Friday. I know Bert set out a schedule. I haven't had a chance to open the PDF and try to decipher it yet. But uh, maybe I'll do that during uh, the show while Michael is doing his part of the recap. Let me give you the numbers from around the world. We'll start in the U.S. with cash markets or the indices as they're called. Currently, the Dow is down 172 points. The NASDAQ is down 235. The S&P 500 is down 52. And the Russell 2000 is down 6. And the NASDAQ, that's a drop of 1 and 3 quarter percent. And for the S&P, it's a drop of a little over 1%. In the commodity basket, crude oil down $3.58, trading $94.69 last. That's a drop of over 3.5%. Gold is up $9.80, trading $19.55.40 last. Silver up $0.28, cents, trading $25.10 last. That's a gain of a little over 1%. And if you're trading a futures contract, it's a gain of about $1,250 per contract traded. In the Asian markets at the close, the Nikkei posted a loss of 164 points. The Shanghai dropped 84 points, which is over 2.5%. And the Hang Seng fell 663 points, which is a drop of over 3%. And in the European markets at the close, FTSE down 51, the DAX down 90, and the CAC actually up 8 points on the session. That's the only green on the screen. It was a red day in Asia. Mixed day in the UK, thanks to the CAC being up seven and a half points. And in the US, it's a big red Radio Monday. With that, let's go to Michael and get a recap of what happened this morning in the live training room. After that, I'll come back. We'll take a look at the Logic 247 alerts, the Concierge Trade Alerts, and at any point during the broadcast, 
if you have a question, all you have to do is type it into the question box, and we'll be happy to answer it for you. So, Michael, if you're ready, you can take it away. And that might be the sound of Michael not being quite ready. So, let's do this. Let's go to a daily chart of the S&P 500. This is the last leg up on the daily chart. The low was put in March 15th at a price of 41.29 and a half. The most recent swing high was put in March 29th at 46.31. We retraced to the 24% Fibonacci retracement level and we caught a fairly decent bounce. We bounced up to 45.88.75. We had red falling overhead, which is pressure on the market. And so we were sent down to the daily BBC where we traded for one, two, three days. We consolidated three trading sessions and we closed right at the BBC here. And then we ran back up to the 24% Fib retracement from the other direction. Coming down at support, going up, resistance. And so back to support at the BBC. And then back to resistance at the step line and the 24% Fib. And that has sent today's market below the daily BBC. And we're now below the 38% Fib retracement. In fact, we've only got one weekly trading zone left below us, and it's only Monday. So either I got it really wrong, or we're on the verge of seeing a turnaround in the markets and another leg to the upside. Now, turn on, turn on Tuesday is tomorrow, right? That's what they call it, turnaround Tuesday. So we've pulled back to the 38% fib, and below that is the 50% fib. And then here's where the bullish cross took place that led to this rally. Of course, the first time, well, number one, we would expect quite a bounce at the 38% fib retracement, which we can argue that we did pretty decent back up to the 24%. But breaking that 38, uh, the next thing in our crosshairs would be the 50% Fib retracement down at 43.78-79. And our lowest weekly zone on the week is 43.65-66. So, Michael, if you're ready, you can take it away. Okay. Sure. Here we go. Coming over you should see it. Yes, I got you should it. see it right now. Excellent. All right. All right. I'll hit Here mute and it's all yours. All mine. <laughs> you hit me. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Um, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, the 11th day of April, 2022. If you've not taken a free trial with us and you need, I mean, you want, you all need to take a free trial if you haven't. But if you want to take a free trial, then go here to emutrainingschool.com. On this page, all that we ask for is your first name, your email, and your phone number. You can tell us to be a straight challenge so we can tell the one-on-one training just for you. Hit the send button, you'll be sent to confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay. All right. Spreadsheet. Now, um... If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you're going to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. All right, I said it. Today, as I said, is the 11th day of May, May, April 2022. Um, today, made 60 ticks in crude, five ticks in gold, and 30 ticks on the ES. Put us at 1,025 on the morning session. Today, it took six minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day. That one was up $190 a contract, and it took a total of 25 trades this morning. So on the month now, up $7,782. That's over seven trading days, averaging one. 1,000, 
$111 per contract per two-hour trading day. We have now gone 131 days since business days since our last negative day. And um, we've gotten our goal every day this year so far, 69 possible business days. And that puts us at $77,691 per contract per two-hour business day on the year, averaging $1,125 per day on the year. Now, if you were to quit when you got your goal for the day and add one contract per month, so far this year, you would have only worked 9.5 hours, right? And you would have averaged $2,116 per hour. This is going to be a huge number by the end of the year. The way it's going right now, that is going to be a huge number by the end of the year. Anyway, let's get into the trades, all right? We didn't have, well, we had 25 trades, I think, right? But gold is where we didn't have too many. So we'll start out with gold. I was actually negative on gold for a little while after this trade. Um, I'll go all the way back here. All right, so this is where we started. We got our first trade right here on gold, I think. We ended up with one tick? Yeah, we ended up with one tick on that. I, I thought I was going to stop out on it, but we ended up with one tick on that. There were two trades on gold that I thought I was going to stop out on. I didn't. I missed this. It was this big leg up right here, but we didn't get a single trade set up for it. And then I got all the way over here, and we didn't get a trade set up for that either. It was a move down right here. would have been a break even had I taken it. Then it got really sideways. All the markets got really sideways right here. Then there was a nice short right here that was giving us this for a target. I missed it. Then it, it really pushed down after that. There was another trade in there. You could have gotten right here. Um, for that leg down that I missed. There was a follow-up right there that I missed. Finally, I got one right here. I picked five ticks up on that to get me to plus six. Then you see the cycle was just going back and forth and back and forth in the slingshot, not really giving too many good opportunities. There was one right here that I missed. That was a pretty good opportunity for a short. One here and one here for longs. Um, it was giving me good target spots, but it wasn't giving me good entry spots. Um, we grabbed one over here, another one that I just about stopped out on. I got one tick on that to put me a plus seven. Then I had a break even. Then I stopped out, and it was at minus one. And then I got six right here to put me at plus five. Um, really wasn't much else during the break. I guess one highest probability short right here. That worked out for that leg down. Then a second highest probability momentum short right there. And then another short right here. And that was it for the gold. We ended up with a plus five on the gold. All right, I'll just jump into the crude now. Um, we missed a bunch of trades in crude, but we did get we did get some good ones. Um, it was moving along pretty well today. Crude was, it was moving pretty nicely. And this morning, um, well, I had, I had accidentally left a stop on one trade, and, and it got me. It got me a pretty good gain, and we ended up with that at the end of the session. Um, but I was trading for a little while this morning, more than one contract. Um, but anyway, right in here, we had our first trade on crude, and I believe we got eight ticks on the first trade right there that almost got us to our goal for the day. At that point, between the gold and the crude, we were at plus nine. And then we picked up 10 ticks on this one right here. And that put us at uh, plus 18 on gold. That got us to the goal for the day, but it put us at plus 19 overall. That's where we were at 190 when we got the goal for the day. Um, <clears throat> then I, what did I do here? I got a break even there. Then I got a, another break even there. Over here, plus five. It looks like I yeah, had plus five to get me to 23. Then a plus two to get me to 25. Then I missed a trade. Looks like I missed. Mm. Nope. And then I stopped out. <clears throat> I went from 25 down to 17. Then I went from 17 to 19. Then this is where I explained a trade um, in here. I was just showing what I thought was going to do. That's why these arrows are in here. There wasn't actual trades right there. But I had shut the market off and I said, you know, we were at like this point right here. And I said, I think it's going to go up into this circle and then go down from there. And it did all that. So I guess I should probably just delete those things so they don't throw me off if I ever go back to look at them again. There you go. 
today because I do have three appointments today. Um, there was a nice bounce off the BBC here, highest probability trade. Uh, we picked up a short over here. Uh, where did we end this? We went from 17 there to 19 right there. Then over here, we picked up 10 ticks. <laughs> this is the trade that I left on. I left a stop on on this one. Um, the stop was, I believe the stop was up here. And I don't know why it didn't stop me out here. It seems like it should have probably stopped me out there. But anyway, I ended up long during this when I went for a walk. And I came back and I was up quite a bit. But I picked up 10 ticks right there on the short. Put me at plus 29. Then missed a trade there. Right here, I picked up from 29. I went to... Uh, there's a trade that I missed in here, a plus seven somewhere that I missed. I think it was right here off the BBC. And then I picked up, uh, 14 on this one to get from 36 to 50. So I think I was missing a plus seven right in here. Um, and then a plus 14 to get me from 36 to 50. I, I went from 29 to 36 and 36 to 50. And then I missed that, whatever that was in there. And I got five there to put me to 55 and five more to get me to 60. And that looks like a couple of ticks in there that I must have missed. And that gets me to the break on crude oil now in here. Let's see, there was really nothing. Really nothing happening in there. There was a bounce off the BBC here. That you could have taken highest probability trade. It was a momentum trade, actually. This would have been the one, the bounce off the BBC that you could have taken. You couldn't take the momentum trade because we had unbroken dynamic resistance, but you could take this one. That was not momentum trade. There's a second bounce off the BBC here, but you couldn't take this. You could take the momentum trade from right here, okay? In this case, you could take it because we had broken dynamic resistance here. So it was a trend line trade is what it ended up being, a trend line momentum trade. Um, then let's see, only highest probability trades from here on one right here, highest probability trade. And that was it. Just one highest probability trade. Okay. So with crude, we ended with plus 60 at least. All right. Now the ES, wait, let me go back and look at one thing here on crude. Cause we were talking about what this should do up here. There was a weekly trading zone right up in here. And we were talking about whether it should go all the way back down or not. It's at the MA1 right now in the 30 minute. So it's likely to find some support right here, but it wouldn't surprise me if it pushes all the way back down to the low of the day. Okay. Now I did put the weekly trading zones on here. I just did not notice what Dwayne had said earlier about us being so close to the low zone already this week. So where is the low zone? The low zone is all the way down here. Okay. So if we make it down here, if the markets really fall apart and we make it all the way down here by the end of the day or the end of the day tomorrow, then I'll be looking at some call options for the end of the week. Okay. So those of you guys who are, uh, those of you guys who are passport guys, I'll be putting some stuff in the option channel. Um, I'll probably put stuff in there anyway. Um, coming up tonight if I have time. Um, okay. I haven't done anything in there in a while because I've been so busy with the, the paint bars and stuff for Ninja Trader um, that I haven't had time to, but we'll get back to that. All right, so coming all the way back here, uh, we started out in a whole bunch of chop on the ES. We didn't do anything, then finally broke out of the chop, just moved really fast down to the zone. There was one trade in here that you could have taken. Well, there was one right here, and one right here, one right here, and one right here. You could have taken to grab that move down okay or at least some of it um coming out of the coming out of the zone there was a trade right here you could have taken nothing there i don't know i didn't do anything until all the way over here my first trade on the es was right here i picked up four ticks i don't even think i wrote it in the first trade i picked up four ticks on the first one then eight ticks on the second one to get me to plus 12 then i missed that i missed that and it got really choppy and nasty and I got to break even. They say, I miss that, miss that. I mean, I got to break even, and I got to break even. I miss that, and I got to break even. And this is during the break where I was saying I thought it was going to go down. From here, I thought it was going to get back up into the circle and then go down. And it pretty much did that. And my next trade was all the way over here. I picked up, 
we went from 12 to 34 so i picked up 22 ticks on that on that trade right there and then from 34 i went to 38 i picked up four ticks and then i stopped out and put me back to 30. that went down and did almost what i thought it was going to do i thought it was going to get down to here on this push and it didn't make it there but it kept going down but it wasn't giving us any trade setups on the downside Okay, and then we get into the break, and only highest probabilities during the break. There was one here, uh, one here, this was actually not one, um, not one, one here, one here, and that was it. So there was some opportunity in the S, but there was a lot of chop that you had to wade through this morning. A lot of it. You know, in the pre-market, it wasn't that bad. But once our markets opened up all through this, you just had to, you had to sit on your hands through all of this stuff right here. Unfortunately, the slingshot was keeping us out of almost all of it. That one that we stopped out on did end up going in the direction we wanted it to go. It just took it forever to decide on it. That was our morning. So we'll go back to the spreadsheet. Again, if you're going to read it, you got to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the 11th day of April 2022. Made 60 ticks in crude, 5 ticks in gold, and 30 ticks on the ES. Put us at 1,025 in the morning session. Today, it took six minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, I was up $190 a contract, and I took a total of 25 trades. So on the month now, we're up $7,782. So seven trading days, averaging $1,111 per contract, per two hour trading day in the morning session on the month. Um, we've now gone 131 business days since our last negative day, and that's our negative day in the room, okay? Um, and we've gotten our goal for the day in the room every day so far this year, 69 out of 69 business days. That puts us at $77,691 a contract. That's over 69 business days, averaging $1,125 per contract per two hour business day. We had 1,025 today, so but brought both of those numbers down today. Anyway, if you were to quit trading when you got your goal for the day, um, you had to add one contract per month. You would have only worked 9.5 hours so far this year. And you would be making $2,113, $116 per hour. That's what it would have averaged out to so far this year. Okay, so if you've not taken a free trial with us and you want to, go here to eminitrainingschool.com. On this page, all we ask for is your first name, your email, and your phone number. You can tell us the biggest training challenge, so we can tell it when I'm training, just for you. Hit the send button and be sent to confirmation link. You must click the confirmation link, okay? All right, that's it, guys. With that, we can pass it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, and Studio A, Old Looking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. Yeah, Dwayne is ready. I'm ready. Excellent. Air recap boost. for the recap. Uh, today it took, uh, hang on, uh, six minutes and three trades to get to $190 a contract. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okie doke. All right. That's what happened. The first two hours of the week. Since the Wall Street Open, 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern. But the global markets actually open Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then they trade until around the clock until Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern. But this Friday is Good Friday. And I believe the markets are closed Friday. Is that not correct? I believe that is correct as well. We'll have to check on that, though, because the banks are not closed. So we'll have to check on that. Mm -hmm. Bert sent out a PDF, so I haven't had a chance to decipher it yet. Okay. But, I, uh, I I'll take a peek at some okay. point. Then I'll post in the uh, discussion group uh, if the okay. markets are going to be open, and then we'll discuss what we're going to do. All right. Sounds good. Okie doke. All right, guys, so we'll jump to Logic 247. Uh, we're going to attempt to. There we go. Okay, since the market opened last night at 6 p.m. Eastern, 
We only issued six alerts. One never triggered. We're all caught up. So I'll see what I can find this afternoon. We have five actionable alerts. So far, nothing has been stopped out based on not risking more than $300 per contract per trade, less when possible, based on market structure in a very simple three-step process that we teach all of our passport holders. Now, along with the logic alerts, which are based on current price action and come out around the clock as opportunity presents, we also still have our original alert service, the concierge trade alerts. And these differ in a couple ways. One, they're based on historic price action and they don't come out around the clock. They come out shortly after the Globex open each evening. So last night it was 6.25 p.m. Now, once published, these numbers are good for the entire session. You probably don't trade all the markets we cover, but for the markets you do trade, you should go to the chart and make a note of where price is when this report is published. Because from that point forward, if price starts trending up towards 45.24, that's bullish. So our strategy will look for opportunities to be long the market. If price starts trending down towards 44.57, then our strategy will look for opportunities to be short the market. And in both cases, that's where you'll use Logic 247 and everything you learn in the live trading room every single day to yourself find opportunities to be either long or short the market. Almost like paint by numbers. Okay, if you want a screenshot, grab it, and then we're gonna go through each and every one of those markets real quick. Okay, so we already covered the daily chart for the most part. It's still dropping. It's like it wants to head for this 50% Fib retracement and or this bullish cross below. But we are on the low of the session here. On the ES 30 minute chart. Now the vertical line separates today, actually Sunday night and today from Friday. So let me clean this up. Now, these are last week zones you see on my chart. I don't put the new zones on my chart for the show until Tuesday because the alerts that go out on Sunday night are based on last week's zones. And we also want confirmation that the new zones have taken over and are now holding sway over the market. Here's where we opened. We came down through the weekly zone at 44.79. We sliced through it, pulled right back up to it, and then headed lower. 44.57 was the trigger. We had an initial drop to 44.55, so a couple points. We got back above the trigger, triggered again. This time we dropped to 44.50. That's seven points at $50 a point. $350 per contract traded. Then we got back above the trigger and we dropped again to $44.50. Another $350 per contract traded is what the market made available. Once an alert triggers, Logic or CTA, there's a greater probability of it triggering multiple times than not triggering multiple times. So as you can see, we had one, two, three triggers right there. And then price got above the BBC just enough to hit that weekly zone from last week. It was resistance here. It was resistance here. On Friday, it was support. It was support. Resistance, resistance. What was once support often becomes resistance and what was resistance often becomes support. I know you've heard that before, but the weekly zones really help you to visualize that. 
Now, after we hit the zone and found resistance, the market's going to go look for support. So it comes down through the trigger, but you've got blue and climbing in the picture. Red and falling is bearish, blue and climbing is bullish. And so you don't want to short in a bullish environment. And as you can see, price did trigger, and it would have been a profitable trade, but the guidelines suggest staying away from that trade unless you're a more experienced trader. And then price pulled back to the BVC and consolidated for two hours. The pullback holds more often than it doesn't. And blue and climbing now comes back to red and falling, which makes this trigger here 44.57 down to 44.54. So that's three points. And we get back above the trigger, trigger again. The low this time is 44.47. So that's 10 points at $50 a point. $500 per contract traded, 44, 47, yeah. And then we get back above the trigger. We still got red and falling. So from 44, 57, we've dropped all the way down to a low of 44, 25. So that would be 32 points at $50 a point. That'd be a little over $1,500 per contract traded. That's the story on the S&P. Now we've still got red and falling. And we're right at the low of the session. If we get above red and falling, then we can anticipate a pullback to the BBC. The pullback holds more often than it doesn't. Now, once price pulls back to the BBC, we would expect that to be good resistance and give us another leg to the downside. On the Dow, no trigger on the long side, but quite a few triggers on the short side. Remember, once an alert triggers, there's a greater probability of it triggering multiple times. Now, on every alert, logic and CTA the final trade to target is the weekly trading zone above on a long and the weekly trading zone below on a short. So from 520, we, this zone is 34,465 slash 470. So that's 50 bucks, I'm sorry, 50 points at $5 a point, $250 per contract traded. So we consolidate it last week's zone. We get back above the BBC. We don't quite make it to the zone and this bearish cross, which would have also been resistance. Price comes back down through the trigger, but you got blue and climbing in the picture. So even though it was a profitable trade, ran right to the target, still not a good idea. You need to wait on a short for the market to return to red and falling. Now, one like this, where blue and climbing is so far above the market, our more experienced traders would trade this down for another $250 per contract traded. And then we get back above the trigger and we drop for another $250 per contract traded. And the market is still dropping. We're a little off the low of the session. Okay, all right, that's the story on the Dow. Now, if the Dow continues to drop, look left because you got a potential low here. And if it makes it through that swing low, this bullish cross, which led to an extended move to the upside, has not been challenged yet. Once this area is challenged the first time, we expect it to be good support until proven otherwise, okay? So maybe we get a little bounce, and then on the second go, we make it through. But you had lots of consolidation at the weekly zone, lots of consolidation at the weekly zone. Only three things happen at a zone. The most common thing is consolidation. 
second most likely is rejection. That's where when the candle closes, the only thing left touching the zone is the wick. This isn't a perfect example because it didn't quite touch the zone, but it kind of gives you an idea of rejection. And I showed you the slice <coughs> on the S&P. Price sliced through the zone. When that happens and the slice runs out of steam, it will almost always pull back up to the zone it sliced through and then continue in the direction of the slice. The Russell. Okay. As with all the other indices, so far, no trigger on the long side. Several triggers on the short side. The indices are pack animals. They like to travel together. And when they aren't traveling together, Those are more difficult markets to trade. Okay. So, here's the open last night. Oh, and we had drawn this window of opportunity. And this window of opportunity on the show Friday, as you can see, it filled and it filled. And then we drew this bigger window of opportunity and it filled right to the tick. And then we opened last night. We're below the BBC. We've got red and falling. We trigger at 1986. And we drop to 81.20. So that's almost five points. So about $225 per contract traded. And then back above the trigger, another drop. This drop takes us down to 1976. That's 10 points, $50 a point. $500 per contract traded. And we pull up to the BBC, we spike it, we come back down, but we don't trade this one because we got blue and climbing in the picture. Again, our more experienced traders might have traded this down to blue and climbing, but see how blue and climbing kicked in as support and walked the market right back up. And then we get a trigger here. We're below blue and climbing. So again, our more experienced traders would have probably taken advantage of this. Uh, from 86 down to 81, five points. Red and fallings back in the picture here. And so once price gets below the BVC, price drops to 1978. Eight points, $50 a point, $400 per contract traded back above the trigger. Oh, what was the high here? Yeah, there was one and a half points on the long side. Okay, nothing to get too excited about. And then we've got price below blue and climbing, which of course turns it into red and falling. A more experienced trader would have taken this trade down to 1977. It'd be nine points, $50 a $450 per contract traded. We're on the low of the session, so there's still plenty of room to drop. We closed the week on the Russell below the lowest weekly trading zone last week. On the NQ. We drew in a window of opportunity on Friday's show. And as you can see, it filled multiple times. Once, twice, three times. And then even into last night, four times. And then we hit the trigger at 14,300 and we dropped to 256. 
Uh, so that's 44 points at $20 a point, $880 per contract traded. Then price gets back above the trigger, drops again, and from 14300 we drop to 14196.50. Let's just round that up to 14200. That's 100 points, $20 a point. That's $2,000 per contract traded over an hour and a half. That's what the market made available. Then we get back above the trigger one more time. Unfortunately, we got blue and climbing in the picture. So our more experienced traders would let price get below blue and climbing and then potentially take advantage of this move. But as you can see, the pullback holds more often than it does it and held here and it held here and it held here and it held here and it held here, and it held here, and it held here. And now we're just off the lows of the session. Crude oil. Okay, no trigger on the long side. On the short side. Ninety six thirty was the trigger and the target, of course, the zone below, which is ninety five eighty slash eighty five. <clears throat> so that's four hundred and fifty dollars per contract traded. And then price got back above the trigger and it gave another four hundred and fifty dollars per contract traded. And then it got back above the trigger. And you've got blue and climbing in the picture, but it's below the target, so our more experienced traders might have taken another $450 per contract traded. But as you can see, the pullback to the BBC held, and it held, and it held, and it held. We even spiked up to touch that zone. And then now we're working our way below blue and climbing. So if you're trading crude, $93.40 down to $93, it's $400 per contract traded in that little window of opportunity right there. Gold. Okay, no trigger on the short side. Long side trigger was 1960. I'm just cleaning this up. Okay. So, gold pays $100 a point. We triggered at 1960 and we ran up to 63.30 so that's a $330 per contract move and we got back below the trigger and we ran up to 1974.60 that's $1,460 per contract traded And then price came back down to last week's zone and consolidated. And now if we take out that swing low right there, in fact, the reason the market stopped there, when there's a bullish cross that leads to an extended move, the first time price revisits that area, it's most often support. Same is true of a bearish cross that leads to an extended move. 
Now here comes the second attempt to break through that support area, which creates a window of opportunity from 1947 down to 1945. And we could, that's a very conservative window. It could drop deeper right before your eyes down to 1943. So that's the story on gold. Silver. No trigger on the short side, big trigger on the long side. Now, this is basically rejection. Price behaves around a weekly trading zone, often or around a CTA often the same way it does around a weekly trading zone. And so you've got red and falling right here. You've got a weekly zone here. So without blue and climbing in the picture, that's really one you don't want to mess with. Over here, you've got blue and climbing. You've got price, the step line, blue and climbing, the BBC. Perfect conditions for a long. And we went from 2501 to 2528, the target. So that's 27 pennies. It's $1,300 per contract traded. And now price is coming back to this zone. Resistance, resistance, we broke through. We'll find out in a second if it's going to be support. And if it isn't, then we expect support here at the zone. And then there might be an opportunity for the short to trigger. And the last market is the euro, which hasn't triggered on the short side. It had a huge gap open last night, <clears throat> which it filled. And then on the long side. For 40 up to 595 I think that's a, at least a couple hundred dollars per contract traded and as you can see price when we we gapped open and we pull back to the BBC the pullback holds more often than it doesn't then we make this rally then we come back and it holds but we got red falling overhead now so we have to anticipate lower prices so price trades below the BBC Pulls back, pull back holes, and down we go. And we're headed for that short trigger. And that brings us back to the daily chart where are we are just sort of stuck on the low of the day here, it seems. The next area to expect support based on the daily chart. See this swing low on this day right here? That was 44.15, which was also an old weekly trading zone. And then you've got the 50% Fib retracement. And then you've got this bullish cross. So there you have it. To become a member of the CFRN family, a lifetime member, no expiration, no recurring fees, one purchase, one price, one money, one time. It's everything a trader needs all under one roof at one low price. Nine out of 10 traders fail simply because they don't have a teacher. 
Imagine trying to become an electrician, a plumber, or a brain surgeon, or a pilot without someone to teach you how to do it. Everybody knows if you're going to pursue a career path, you must have an instructor. So we have one, a live one, every day for two hours in the live training room, putting on, taking off trades right in front of you, explaining every move they make, every trade they take, and the rule behind it while you trade along in the simulator and ask questions. You need to put together 10 consecutive days in a row in SIM where you reach your goal in 10 trades or less before you go live. Once you accomplish that, our 2420 blueprint will give you the green light to go live with one contract. Now your goal, your trade in real money, is to increase your account balance by $2,000. Once that happens, the blueprint will give you the green light to add the second contract. Now, the first contract is funded with your startup capital, but the second contract is funded with profit you earned in the market. The blueprint will always notify you when it's time to add number three, number four, number five, number 10. But you only add one at a time, and you only add with profit you earned in the market. Two points out of the S&P with one contract is 100 bucks. Two points out of the S&P with 10 contracts is a grant. It's worth the patience. In fact, you won't survive in this business without patience and self-discipline. Now. We provide you with the knowledge, the strategy, the methodology, the tools to get the job done, and a lot of other stuff. But the two things we can't give you is patience and self-discipline. You got to reach down inside of yourself and find those things. Along with access to the live training room every trading day, you also have access to unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentoring. You'll learn a methodology which works not only with futures, but with stocks, with Forex, with crypto, with options. Our indicator set works just as well with the S&P and crude as it does with Apple or the Euro or Bitcoin. All markets trade the same price flows from support to resistance back to support back to resistance back to support over and over again and again wouldn't it be nice to know where to expect that support and that resistance well the indicators are your dynamic support and resistance the weekly trading zones are your fixed support and resistance for the entire week. As a passport holder, you own the indicator set for life. You also receive the Logic 247 alerts, the concierge trade alerts, the Thursday night members only workshop, everything a trader needs, all under one roof at one low price. And we provide around-the-clock support via our Telegram discussion group. So get your passport here, eminifuturestrading.com. If you have questions, call Valerie at 949-42-E-MINI or send an email to support at cfrn.net. And now our good word for the day. Jesus' work philosophy. John 4.34 Jesus said, I must finish the work that he gave me to do. Instead of confining Jesus to church on Sunday, Let's study his work philosophy, his attitude, his values, and beliefs on how to get things done. 
The principles he lived by call for these. Number one, being clear about your assignment. He said, I must finish the work that he gave me to do. Jesus understood that focus maximizes skill and opportunity. So if you're talented, energetic, and active, and you're still not seeing concrete results, your problem may be lack of focus. When Nehemiah was rebuilding Jerusalem's walls, his enemies said, Come, let us meet together. That's Nehemiah 6.2. That's when he sent back this message, I am doing a great work, so I can't come. He was focused. Number two, prioritizing tasks in the order of their importance. When you don't do what has to be done according to its importance, jobs start to arrange themselves according to their urgency. And when that happens, you miss great opportunities. The Bible says Jesus needed to go through Samaria, John 4.4. 4. To the disciples, this probably looked like a diversion because it wasn't the shortest route to where they wanted to go. But there was a woman in Samaria that Jesus wanted to redeem. A vessel through which he reached the entire city with the gospel. The bottom line is Jesus was clear about his priorities. Are you? And number three, creating a definitive timetable. In other words, set deadlines and stick with them. Jesus knew he had only three and a half years to get the job done, so he made every day count. One of the biggest lies we tell ourselves is, I'll get to it later. To succeed in life, let Jesus' work philosophy become your master plan. And tomorrow we'll talk about part two. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision.